What's up, everybody? It's time for Extreme Pictionary Battle. I'll be the official guesser and judge for Pictionary today. And now it's time for our contestants to choose what they'll paint. Today's category is Animals Doing People Things. Okay, guys, time to choose a card. Interesting. A polar bear taking a bubble bath. I haven't taken a bath in three weeks. How am I gonna draw that? Huh, we'll figure it out. All right, Micah, you're up first. Let's do this. All right, we have a big, broad orange stroke to start us out here. Looks like it could be a road, maybe, or just a giant square of orange. But we're looking for an animal, so I, I don't see any animal shapes quite yet. All right, he's moving over to blue, and it's something over here that's blue. That could be water. Water's blue, so maybe a water animal, maybe a fish of some sort. Still, I'm unclear about the orange square, but that's okay. Is the blue, is that the animal? So the, this top part, that's the animal. Yeah. Okay, so we have the animal at the top. It could it's, it looks like a big animal, so maybe like, okay, maybe like an elephant, a giraffe, a gorilla, bear. Okay, so a, a bear. Okay, so we have a bear, grizzly bear, koala bear. Oh, freezier. Okay, maybe, maybe a polar bear? Okay, we have a polar bear. Okay, what? What uh, what activity is this polar bear up to? All right, now we're splashing the water. We're splashing, okay, we're like splashing water. So this polar bear is swimming, doing people things, washing their hands. This polar bear is, is, is taking a shower. This is, is, polar bear is taking a bath. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're here with Cam. Cam, do you think that you can beat Micah's time? You betcha. All right, let's do it. Llama playing basketball. I don't even know how to draw a llama. I guess I'll draw a basketball really well. All right, we're starting with a big circle. So that's either the head, maybe the head of an animal, or maybe that's part of the people activity. Okay, we got lines down the middle. So I'm thinking that's less of a head. Another circle, that might be a, a nose, some hair on this animal. I think that's the hair on this animal. So that's gotta be the animal. So is this like a, is this some kind of, maybe a ball? Okay, that's a ball of some sort. Maybe a baseball, football, you have that like pointy edge, but I think maybe a basketball. Okay, it's a basketball. So here's the animal. It looks kind of like a tree right now. The animal has a, clearly a lot, a long neck. So maybe a maybe a giraffe. So I'm seeing like like you're doing those circles. So it could be like the wool of a sheep. Um, did you just draw four legs? Okay, four legs on this animal. This animal is holding the basketball. Is it a is it a a goat a, or an alpaca? Oh, a, a llama. Is this a llama playing basketball? Yeah, we got it. A great job by both of our players today, but the winner of today's Extreme Pictionary Battle is Cam. I just wanna thank my third grade art teacher, okay? Yeah. Exercise your brain by shouting out the answers to some brain teasers. What has to be broken before you can use it? An egg. What runs around a backyard but never moves? A fence! Which is heavier, a pound of feathers or a pound of rocks? They weigh the same amount, one pound. Thoughts are powerful little conversations you have in your head that no one else hears but you. You know, thoughts like, what if I fail my test? He's always making fun of me. Will my friends be there? My stomach hurts. I'm gonna go swimming. Thoughts can start off small and go away quickly, or they can grow to be so big and so bad that they ruin everything about your day. Because we are born with the desire to do wrong things, most of our thoughts are not ones that please God. We think about ourselves a lot, and many times we will find ourselves thinking about things that aren't true or right. The devil tricks us into thinking lies 
And if we don't pay attention, those thoughts can get us into big trouble and make us feel terrible inside. But God created us to have minds that think, and he gave us the ability to catch our thoughts. When we do, we can check them to see if they match what he says is right and true. God's words have power and can change any thought we have. And when we let him change the way we think, we'll see that thinking the way God thinks is totally what's best. Let God change the way you think. Let me tell you about this guy in the Bible named Paul. Okay, cool. What's his deal? Well, actually his name was Saul. Dude, could he not make up his mind? It's not like that, but kinda. Saul had a lot of mean thoughts about people who followed Jesus. Oh really? Mean thoughts like, I hope they step on a Lego. No, unfortunately he was putting them all in jail. And that's exactly what he was doing one day on his way to a city called Damascus. Out of nowhere, a bright light blinded him. Whoa, kind of like when your dad turns the lights on to wake you up when you're late for school? Kinda, but this was way brighter. And the shocking part was what Saul heard after he fell to the ground. Really? Was it, Luke, I am your father? No, wrong story. It was Jesus talking, and he said, Saul, why are you hurting me? But Saul had no idea who was speaking to him and asked, who are you, Lord? I bet Jesus was like, dude, stop messing around with my people. Not quite. Jesus answered from heaven saying, I am Jesus. I am the one you are hurting. Now get up and go into the city. There you will be told what you must do. As you can imagine, everything Saul thought about Jesus changed completely. I bet Jesus rules. When Saul got up from the ground, he realized that he couldn't see anything. Saul was probably like, um, a little help here, fellas. Something like that. The men who were traveling with Saul helped him get to the city. There was a man who lived there named Ananias, who also received a message from Jesus telling him to go to Saul. Now, Ananias had heard about the things Saul had done to the followers of Jesus. Oh, I bet Ananias was thinking about all the mean things Saul could do to him and said, get me out of here. Well, he was, but it appeared that Ananias knew how to catch that thought. He checked it by praying and talking to Jesus. That's when Jesus helped Ananias change his mind and go, trusting that Jesus would take care of him. When he got to the place where Saul was staying, he put his hands on Saul's eyes and prayed for him. What did Saul say? Get your hands off of me, son. Nope. Remember Saul's thinking had completely changed. Instead, Saul was thankful for Ananias, and when he touched Saul, he was immediately filled with the Holy Spirit and could see again. Yay. Whoa! What a miracle! Over the next three years, Saul studied the ways of Jesus and started going by his Roman name, Paul. Everything Paul learned about Jesus changed the way he thought about everything. So, what you're saying is, Paul never had any more wrong thoughts ever again? No way. In a letter to the church in Rome, Italy, Paul said, I don't understand why I act the way I do. I don't do what I know is right. But I agree that what God says to do is good. So I am not the one doing these evil things. The sin that lives in me is what does them. I was wondering what makes me think so many things that aren't good. It all makes sense now. It's not me. It's the sin that lives in me. And I'm sure our enemy, the devil, is trying to attack my thoughts too. It's like I'm in an epic battle for my mind. That's exactly what Paul said too. In another one of his letters, he said, we live in this world, but don't fight our battles in the same way the world does. The weapons we use are not human ones. Our weapons have power from God. So what are these weapons? A lightsaber? Captain America's shield? Not quite, but kind of. Some of the powerful weapons God gives us are the sword of the spirit, which is his word, you know, the Bible, and the shield of faith, which we can use to stop anything the enemy and anything else in the world throws at us to keep us from knowing God. Whoa, that's awesome. So do we need to do this with every thought that pops into our mind? Paul said we should capture every thought and make it obey what Jesus says. That sounds hard to do with every single thought I have. We definitely need God's help to change our thinking. And the good news is, if we will just let him be in charge of our lives and get to know him more each day, he will help us change all of our thoughts. Everybody get on your feet. 
Strike a pose like the one you see on the screen. See if you can freeze and hold it before it's time for the next one. Fun! Now take a seat. Meet Chase. Chase begs his parents for a phone. Can I please have a phone? Even though all of his friends have one, Chase's parents tell him they want to wait a little longer to give him one. Chase's blood starts to boil when lots of thoughts pop into his mind. That's not fair. I never get anything I want. Why do I have the strictest parents in the entire world? Chase can keep letting his thoughts spiral out of control, thinking that he'll never, ever be able to talk to his friends. Then he might start imagining what it would be like to have parents like his friend, Ben, who's had a phone for over a year and gets to stay up as late as he wants playing video games on school nights. Oh, and Ben can have unlimited candy and soda, so he'll think... Maybe I'll just pack my suitcase, sneak out, and go see if I can live with Ben's family. Then I could have a phone. On second thought, that's a really quick way for Chase to be grounded until his 92nd birthday. Or Chase can catch his thoughts and check them by thinking about what God says. Helpful things like, don't be controlled by love for money, be happy with what you have. And true things like, you must honor your father and your mother. If you follow this command, everything will go well for you. After Chase checks his thoughts, he can let God change the way he thinks. And if he's having a hard time doing that, he can pray something like, God, please change my thoughts. The world tells us we should get the things we want as soon as we want them. But asking God to help us change our selfish thoughts always leads to what is best. Let God change the way you think. Recap what we've learned today in exactly 10 words. No more, no less. My thoughts are powerful and God helps change them. Whoa, lizards? Yes! <laughs> Jesus spoke to Paul and changed his thoughts about Everything! Wait, everything's just one word, right? Yeah! Yes. We can think differently when we check our thoughts with verses in the Bible. Ugh, I went over! Uh. Yeah, yeah, you did. <laughs> when it comes to thoughts, catch, check, and change them? Yeah! <laughs> I love the sound effect. <laughs> Let's practice catching a thought, checking it, and changing it. What is something you've been thinking about a lot lately that's made you feel sad, or worried, or scared, or mad? Maybe you've been thinking about something that someone said to you, or something scary that you saw on TV. Pick one thought that comes to mind. Pretend your thought is a balloon. Now squeeze one hand like you're catching string on the balloon. Hold on to your thought balloon and let's check it by asking God what he thinks. So tell God what's in your thought balloon and how it makes you feel. Ask God to show you what you should be thinking about. Since you've talked to God about your thought, you can let it go now. Just open up your hand like you're letting go of the balloon. Great job! The next time you have a thought that makes you feel sad, worried, scared, or mad, this is one way you can catch it, check it, and change it. Let God change the way you think.